this weather. The line may not wrap around St. Bridges like we've seen in the past, but there are still a number of migrants out here braving the Arctic temperatures, waiting to be placed in a shelter. Jorman Antonio Cordero has been living on the street for nine days now. He What's going on? You hey man, let's get y'all up in here, man. Let's have a uh, a wonderful show, man. You know how we do over here. It is Red Supreme. Sit up there and like this stream, man. You know. What it do? This is a wonderful show, man. So y'all get up in here. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Let's get into this conversation, man. Uh, everything is lovely. Yeah, man. It's Friday night, man. What's going on with y'all, man? Shout out to Diggity. Shout out to my people up in the building. It is Friday night. Everything is wonderful. Everything is lovely. Shout out to my real ones, man. I need y'all to tap in. Let's do it now. Let's do it now and show you how it goes down. FBA standing 10 toes down, man. Like I told you, man, I've been going, I've been going in on a lot of stuff, a lot of unnecessary things, man, that got to get exposed, man. Like one thing is like these culture vultures in hip hop. Oh, my God, bro. We got so many culture vultures in hip hop. And I'm going to be real. It's coming. It's coming from the Latin community. It's coming from the Latin community, man. And I've been exposing that. It's like, wow. Just leeches and culture vultures. Shout out to Maurice Delk, man. What's good, bro? I see you over there doing your thing, man. Shout out to everybody though, man. Like I said, uh, it's wonderful, man. It's a Friday, and I and I, I and I do these shows to put people up on game to show y'all what's really going on. You got gender wars, you got swagger jackers, you got culture vultures. They're all over. Shout out to Maurice Delt, man. Virgil Berry in the building, man. Like I said, um. Black Americans, man, y'all better wake up, man, because if you don't, um, you're going to be replaced. Your communities are being infiltrated. Um, they're sending Hispanic immigrants to black communities by the tons, right, all across the country. And like I said, I got a show coming up this week, and it's about uh, the migrants that are being sent to Chicago. Well, not Chicago, Ohio but it's not televised. Plenty of migrants are being sent to Ohio, but it's not televised. We're going to we're going to dive into that this week. Ain't nothing to laugh about, bro. This is this is 100% facts. One hundred percent facts. Let's get my people up in here, man, on in heavy rotation, man, and hit that like button, man. Show some love to the show. You know we got some very we got some important things to talk about, man. Let's get it. Let's do it. Sit up there and like on the show. You already know, man. Yeah. FBA versus Latinos, huh? (laughs) 
FBA is going to lose. Let me tell you something. Let me speak to you Latinos right now. And this ain't got nothing to do with my feelings. I'm going to give you some facts that you don't want to hear. Let's be real. I got to be real with Latinos just like I got to be real with Africans. You guys haven't fought for a damn thing that you have in this country. Not really. The civil rights movement, you owe that to us. Your slang, the music you listen to, you owe that to us. You guys make money off of that. The 14th Amendment, how you guys come and have anchor babies and become citizens, you owe black Americans. So everything you guys do, you got to thank us because we paved the way for you, not the other way around. We paved the way for you, not the other way around, brother. I got to be honest with you, just like I'm honest with everybody else. Latinos in America benefit off of everything that foundational black Americans do from the civil rights movement to the music to the 14th Amendment. You name it. Latinos benefit from literally everything we do. And they got the nerve to have a problem with the same people they leech off of. Imagine that. Anyway, man, let's get to the chat. Hit the like button, man. Let's get us up to 100 and then we're going to start cooking and I'm going to bring in these clips. No doubt. <laughs> Latinos in America wouldn't have the rights they have if it wasn't for foundational black Americans. That's a fact. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant. I'm giving you an his, uh, I'm giving you a historical fact. Regardless if you like it or not, it's a historical fact. And I and I mention this all the time because I want these people to get a better understanding of what the fucking truth is so that they ain't stuck in their feelings. Like I said many moons ago, I said it yesterday. Can you name one thing in this country that Latinos fought for that benefit foundational black Americans? I'm waiting. Still no answer. Can you name one thing in this country that Latinos fought for that benefits foundational black Americans? I can't name one. Listen here, homie, I just gave you three things that Latinos benefit from. And these are things that foundational black Americans fought for. You guys ain't did a motherfucking thing from us for us. You guys ain't done a damn thing for us besides steal our culture and make money and profit from everything we do. That's pretty much it. You can't name one thing that Latinos in America fought for that benefit foundational black Americans. Not one motherfucking thing. And I'm just being honest. That's a historical fact. You can't name one. Why? Because it's never happened. You never did nothing. You know, listen, Latinos never fought for the rights that they have. You guys didn't you guys didn't even fight for the rights that you have in America. You don't even fight for the rights in your own country that you fled from. See, this is why I can't respect them. They don't even fight for rights in their own country and they come to America and benefit from the rights that we fought for. That's why I can't respect that shit, my nigga. I got to stay 10 toes down and tell these people the truth. You people don't even fight for rights in your own country. You flee to America and benefit from the shit that we fought for and you got the nerve to have a problem with us. That's why I can't respect these people, homie. I can't. And if you got common sense, you wouldn't either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You guys don't even fight for rights in your own country. Then you come over here and benefit from the shit that we fought for. Come on, homie. Anyway, man, let's get into this clip, man. I know these people are mad at me for telling the truth, but fuck it. Somebody got to say it. They're still lining up outside the St. Bridges Retaking Center to try and sort out their future housing plans. All right, Fox 5's Jessica Formoso spoke with several migrants about why it's so critical for them to stand in line even in this weather. The line may not wrap around St. Bridges like we've seen in the past, but there are still a number of migrants out here braving the Arctic temperatures, waiting to be placed in a shelter. Jorman Antonio Cordero has been living on the street for nine days now. He showed up again today to reapply for 30 more days inside a shelter, but no luck. From the looks of it, he most likely will spend another night out on the street. The first night I slept out here with boxes, but the snow came and police kicked us out. So now I go down to the subway and hop on a train, but I got caught. This is what I say to Latinos and all you foreigners from other countries. 
Why don't you fight for the rights in your country? But no, you won't do that. You come to America to benefit off of the shit that foundational black Americans fought for. Guess what? When we fought for civil rights, all minorities and people and people of color benefited from that shit. We should have fought for it. No, this law is strictly for foundational black Americans, not for people of color, not for minorities. Those people are fuck. Listen, they're ass kissers and sellouts, but they benefit from our struggle. All these foreigners and minorities and people of color, they all benefit from our struggle, but they come over here and they got a problem with us, but they won't even fight for rights in their own motherfucking country. Caught and kicked out. This is his second time his 30-day temporary shelter authorization has expired. He arrived in New York City in May. What he is wearing is all he has to stay warm. <laughs> I had a thick blanket, but it got soaked with the snow and rain yesterday. So I had to throw it out. This is all I have. We also found Juan Carlos Vasquez Venega, who says his time at the shelter will be up on Saturday. He came to St. Bridges to try to get ahead and have a place once he is evicted, fearing having to sleep outside on the streets of New York City, but claims he was denied and told to come back on a later date. I have to wait for the day after I get kicked out of the shelter to come back here. They want me to be on the street. I can't. The cold will kill me. Hit that like button and support the show. Foundational Black Americans, get up in here in heavy rotation. Uh, uh, put the cash app in the chat, support the show. Let's get it. All these illegals, minorities, and people of color, they benefit off of shit that we fought for as foundational Black Americans. But they come over here and got a problem with us while kissing ass of white folks. They come over here and they got a problem with us while benefiting from shit that we fought for, but they kiss ass to white folks. I am putting you up on game about these minorities and people of color, man. They don't have our best interests in mind. These people are leeches. These people are users. They've done absolutely nothing for foundational black Americans. All they ever did was leech off of the shit that we fought for. They done, they done absolutely nothing to have the rights that they have. They never... Listen, homie, they don't fight in a country. They don't, they don't even fight in America. All they do is take advantage of shit that we fought for, and they got the nerve to call us lazy, but they ain't done a motherfucking thing in their country besides flee and come to America by the millions. Telling me he regrets coming to America. City Hall says it put the 30-day limit in place as it tries to find housing for the continued influx of arriving migrants under the state's these people think because they come over here and work for cheap jobs that they're better than us. Let me tell you people something. We didn't already done those jobs for free. That shit that they pay you niggas pennies for, we didn't already did that shit for free. What the fuck we look like working for that shit in 2024 moving forward when we when we fought to get up out of that shit. That's how you know these immigrants are just stupid and they don't know history. What the fuck do we look like fighting for that? Is working for that? What do we look like working for that as foundational black Americans? We didn't already did all these jobs for free for over 400 years. You guys are the new slaves and you got the nerve to call us lazy. When America, all America is look, America is just looking for new slaves. So they said, fuck it, we'll get Mexicans and Central Americans to be the new slaves since they have worked for those wages. We can't get Americans to be slaves no more, so we'll get Mexicans and Venezuelans to do it. That's all it is. I ain't got shit to do with you being a hard worker. You're willing to work for less, and that's why they bring you over. That's common sense. Right to shelter law. I worry for them. I, I think it's a complete failure on our city's government. And these men out here say that they count on the goodness of New Yorkers who come out here daily with hot coffee, hot chocolate, winter clothing, in order to keep them somewhat warm during these frigid temperatures. Jen is with Sixth Street Community Center. She's been out here daily trying to help out. We've been collecting donations, bulk goods of warm winter jackets, giving them out, making sure people have Shout out to my girl, uh, Tammy Jackson for the 15. She said <laughs> another great content, Red. I appreciate you, Tammy, for the 15, baby. Let's get some more of you brothers and sisters on that cash app. Support the show. Whipping their ass. You already know what content, what fire shit. Hit the like button to support the show. Now, we're going to get into um, a lot of different things. We're going to talk about these hip hop culture vultures. We're going to talk about migrants who come for benefits while disrespecting foundational black Americans. 
have just like what they need to face the elements. But for these migrants, no matter how many blankets or coats they are offered, at the end, they just want a roof over. As snow began to fall Friday afternoon, the temperature dipped. And with each passing hour, for dozens of adult migrants in the East Village, so did the chance to find a warm and dry place to sleep at night. Where did you sleep last night? Here in the street. During the day, 34-year-old Anthony hangs out at the nearby Earth Church with several dozen other migrants, some of them wearing flip-flops in this winter weather. In the shelter, no espacio, no mucho espacio. No, no, it's, it's, it's no space. In the shelter, there's no space. There are currently five migrant overnight waiting sites across the city, each with limited capacity. There's only one in Manhattan at the Church of the Intercession, which has a capacity of only 300 beds on a first come, first serve basis and is only open from 8 p.m. To now, I got another clip, man. We're in New York City. I'm going to let you guys hear what Charlemagne the God had to say about this migrant crisis. Oh, yes. Charlemagne the God spoke out on, uh, spoke out about this migrant crisis in, in, in New York City. Uh, let's go. To 8 a.m. Shout out to uh, Kawaku for the five. I appreciate you, Kawaku. It's located in Washington Heights, a trip from the East Village, which, according to Google Maps, involves taking three trains and a 21-minute walk. Earth Church's pastor, Reverend Bidley Talon. Well, you have people from foreign countries who are navigating the MTA system. It's not easy for those of us who've lived here for 30 years. A spokesperson for Mayor Eric Adams telling PIX11 News, quote, we have so far opened 216 sites citywide. In addition to those five overnight waiting sites, we do provide. We need some more likes in here, man. If you're watching this Friday night, if you're rocking with foundational black Americans and you really give a damn about what's really important, hit that like button to support the show. Some of the really shit on the Internet, not this gender war bullshit. Although that shit got to, although that shit got to get checked at the same time. I tell females when they out of line. Yes, indeed, I do. But we got other things to talk about and we will bring everything together. Trust me, homie. I won't look, I won't overlook anything. If I got to tell a broad off about it, so I'm going to do that. If I got to speak about politics, I'm going to do that. If I got to speak about culture vultures, I'm going to do that. You can depend. Listen, man, y'all can depend on Red Supreme to chop it up about everything. Culture vultures, I put them on blast. A woman out of line talking shit about black men, I put that broad on blast and go right the fuck in. Regardless of the subject, if it affects black men, Red Supreme will go in. Niggas already know that by now. Let's go. I ain't going to sit up there and just uh, uh, entertain a gender war. By transportation options, including Metro cards, and there are sometimes buses available for transport at the end of each day. No one is saying this commute is ideal, but we are out of good options. So your number is 13,232. When did they tell you to come back? Eh, me dieron este número hace nueve días. They gave him that number nine, nine days ago. We asked that City Hall spokesperson if this church, nearly an hour commute away from the East Village reticketing site, is the closest option for migrants to avoid sleeping on the sidewalk. Then, What about the kids that are replaced by the migrants and now the migrants are at the school and it, uh, the citizens are sitting at home? What about that? Why not send warming vans down to the East Village so they would have the opportunity to be dry and warm overnight? We were told, quote, all viable options are on the table. In Washington Heights, J. Dow, PIX11 News. Okay, now I want y'all to look at this, man. Uh, I got a clip right here from Charlemagne Bogard. Now you got Charlemagne the God saying that people are so upset about this. Uh, this is uh, Charlemagne, watch. I honestly have never spoken to as many people who are concerned about the migrant issue as I have you know, over the past year, they took 2000 migrants and, and, and put them in the school and made the school stay home, made the, the students stay home and, 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 and uh, you know, do school via, via via Zoom. And that was a big issue. Like, I mean, people were calling the radio station. That was just this week, you know, really, really, really complaining about that. So I've never seen, you know, working class people who I interact with every day until this past year really, really, really express their frustration. Sheriff, you got urban America and, you know, rural America saying the same thing now. 
Now you got Charlemagne the God saying that people are so upset about this. Uh, this is uh, Charlemagne. Watch. I honestly have never spoken to as many people who are concerned about the migrant issue as I have, you know, over, over the past year. They took 2,000 migrants and, and, and put them in the school and made the school stay home, made the, the students stay home and, 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 and uh, you know, do school via Via, via Zoom, and that was a big issue. Like, I mean, people were calling the radio station, that was just this week, you know, really, really, really complaining about that. So I've never seen, you know, working class people who I interact with every day until this past year really, really, really express their frustration. Sure, you got urban America and, you know, rural America saying the same thing now. Now you got Charlemagne the God saying that people are so upset about this. Uh, this is uh, Charlemagne. Watch. I honestly have never spoken to as many people who are concerned about the migrant issue as I have, you know, o over the past year. They took 2,000 migrants and, and, and put them in the school and made the school stay home, made the, the students stay home and, 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 and uh, you know. Now we're going to go to another clip. I don't want you guys to hear that now. That is ridiculousness. Now, check this out. Hit the like button to support the show. Red Supreme up in the game. Foundational Black Americans. He said FBA stand up. Shout out to Deshaun. Shout out to my man Deshaun for that four. Deshaun hit us with a four. Appreciate you, my brody. Let's go. Now to the migrant crisis. We have learned Chicago is extending the 60-day shelter deadline for migrants until February. Chicago, they're, they're going to extend the shelter for the migrants in Chicago. Then we're going to go to New York City. We're going to go to Georgia. Then we're going to chop it up about Florida. Hit the like button. Support the show. It is Red Supreme. Let's get some more brothers on that cash app. Get some more brothers on that like button. Subscribe, like, and share. Now to the migrant crisis, we have learned Chicago is extending the 60-day shelter deadline for migrants until February 1st because of the cold weather. It comes as one man is making it his mission to help asylum seekers by welcoming them, welcoming them into his own building. CBS 2's Sabrina Franza has a story. Eight units, 60 beds, one big heart. I worship God, I don't worship money. So I decided to put that money to do something good with this. Trabajo! Trabajo! Once vacant, while he made fixes at the request of the city. So now this whole apartment building, I guess it was vacant, but now they're gonna fill it to house immigrants to give them benefits. Let's continue. Shout out to my man, John Jay for the five. Chicago is extending the 60 day shelter deadline for migrants until February 1st because of the cold weather. It comes as one man is making it his mission to help asylum seekers by welcoming them, welcoming them into his own building. CBS 2's Sabrina Franza has a story. Eight units, 60 beds, one big heart. I worship God. I don't worship money. So I decided to put that money to do something good with this. Trabajo! Trabajo! Once vacant, while he made fixes at the request of the city, 54 people are now living at Chris Amator's building. It's full of asylum seekers who say they need permanent work. Johnson Aguilarte is hoping to send money back to his family in Venezuela. Now having met Chris, he's one step closer. I was working uh, in my, uh, at my house in my basement one day and it was like nine in the morning. And someone's ringing my doorbell and it was four venezuelan migrants johnson was one of them i gave him my office address and i said if you want to work come to my office on monday and then they showed up an hour and a half early on monday when chris found out about the hundreds of migrants that were staying at the city's landing zone he visited them offered his own space no one was able to shower no one you know people were eating out of garbage cans and you know so it was kind of like so i thought i would just come and help bought everyone a mattress filled the fridges with food. It's nice, so they have, they have their own space. It's something many people take for granted. The house has a mantra. Juntos fuerte! Yeah! Juntos fuerte, right? Like, together we're... Oh, uh, he want to help the migrants. Now, how come he didn't do that for the citizens, but he want to be a hero to the migrants, illegal immigrants? <laughs> I guess. The house has a mantra. Juntos fuerte! Yeah! Juntos fuerte, right? Like, together we're strong. <laughs> Not many people would do what you're doing. Oh, I mean, I, I've had a lot of success in my life, uh, you know, I, um, and, uh, and I'm very grateful to God for that. And, 
I don't know what it is. Something kind of like snapped at me and I feel like I'm on God's plan and I'm just trying to help. His plans have hope for the future. I also have another building just like this that I could I could use as well if uh, if they need it. They, the Johnson administration. Mayor Johnson says that he wants to, he's going to define the soul of Chicago. And I asked Mayor Johnson, I got 54 souls right here that need your help. An offer of collaboration in South Shore. Well, Sabrina Franza. We got American citizens that need Mayor Johnson's help. Why, <clears throat> why give it to illegal immigrants when we got American citizens? That makes no damn sense. But I understand the play. I see what you guys are doing. Check game. We're going to go to another clip, man. Let's go. Now, I want you guys to watch this right here. Check this out right here. This is the moment last May that changed everything for the two men involved. Sergeant Michael Kunovich stopped Guatemalan farm worker Virgilio Aguilar Mendez for, quote, suspicious behavior. See, look, now I think an, a police officer had an, uh, an heart, uh, he had a heart attack. Let me just say that heart attack. And he was doing some, some, some field work. He saw some illegal immigrants doing something suspicious. And I think the cop had a fatal heart attack based on what was going on when he tried to check these illegal Mexicans or Guatemalans. Let's continue. Sit up there and support the show. Let's get them up. Red Supreme, subscribe to the channel. This is the moment last May that changed everything for the two men involved. Sergeant Michael Kunovich stopped Guatemalan farm worker Virgilio Aguilar Mendez for, quote, suspicious behavior outside a motel where he was staying in St. Augustine, Florida. After a struggle to arrest Aguilar Mendez, who tried to flee, according to law enforcement, Sergeant Kunovich went into cardiac arrest and died a short time later. Florida's state attorney's office is now charging Aguilar Mendez with aggravated manslaughter of an officer, and he's facing 30 years in prison. Our client's uh, constitutional rights were violated. He was a victim of police brutality. Oh, a yeah, right. Of racial profiling. How is he a victim of profiling when he's an immigrant? You can't go to Mexico or Guatemala and get rights and you ain't no damn citizen. So why the fuck do we get his illegal immigrant rights when he's illegal? He's undocumented for a reason. Send him back home. You wouldn't have these problems. Oh, I get it. You want cheap labor. And you tell these people that they're hard workers all because they do shit for cheap labor. No, they're not hard workers. They're opportunists. Foundational black Americans and already did these fucking jobs for free. Hell no, nah, these people ain't hard workers. If they was hard workers, they would build their own fucking country instead of coming over here to cause problems. That's all I'm saying. Now his attorney is demanding all charges be dropped or he says they'll sue in federal court. How the hell you gonna sue? Imagine you got, you got somebody in your country illegally, undocumented, and he's gonna sue you for harassment. Imagine that. <laughs> this is the moment last may that changed everything for the two men involved sergeant michael kunovich stopped guatemalan farm worker virgilio aguilar mendez for quote suspicious behavior outside a motel where he was staying in saint augustine florida after a struggle to arrest aguilar mendez who tried to flee according to law enforcement sergeant kunovich went into cardiac arrest and died a short time later Florida's state attorney's office is now charging Aguilar Mendez with aggravated manslaughter of an officer, and he's facing 30 years in prison. Our client's uh, constitutional rights were violated. He was a victim of police brutality, a victim of racial profiling. Now his attorney is demanding all charges be dropped, or he says they'll sue in federal court. He was eating outside. He had um, also been planning on going towards the gas station to get a bottle of soda. Okay, I Body camera footage given to NBC News by Aguilar Mendez attorney shows how the encounter unfolded. You can hear Aguilar Mendez saying multiple times that he doesn't speak English. Don't walk away from me. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Don't pull away from me. Sergeant Kunovich continues yelling commands to him in English, and Aguilar Mendez appears to pull away when Kunovich tries to search him. Get on the, ground. the struggle continues, and another officer arrives. No, familia. These next images are disturbing. I tase you. Another officer putting his hand on Aguilar Mendez's throat, throwing him to the ground. 
Put your hands behind your f***ing back. Kunovic tasing him while he's down. With Aguilar Mendez repeating that he doesn't understand. Lay on your stomach. I'm sorry, no speak English. He ends up tased multiple times with officers tackling him and twisting his arms back. One officer also appears to place his knee on Aguilar Mendez's torso. After Aguilar... Now, let me ask y'all something. Do you really believe should this immigrant be charged and sent to prison or should he get deported? Let me know in the comments. Do we want prison or should he be deported? Let me know in the comments about this nonsense. Red Supreme, sit up there and support this gang. Armendez was in handcuffs. Officers found what appeared to be a small pocket knife, which his attorney says he uses for cutting melons. Aguilar immediately told the officer he didn't understand English. His native language is ma'am, which is an ancient indigenous language in Guatemala. At the end of the body cam video, Kunovic's breathing appears labored, and a colleague asks if he's okay before he was taken to a hospital where he was later pronounced dead. St. John's County Medical Examiner determining Sergeant Kunovic died from an irregular heartbeat caused by the hardening of his arteries, along with high blood pressure and heart disease. The report also said, quote, physical exertion and possible emotional stress while apprehending a fleeing suspect may have contributed to his death. And you got to think, man, this Even guy if Kunovic hadn't, as you said, listen, this officer was older. He ain't got no business tussling with young criminals, especially people who happen to be undocumented, who come to this country for the free benefits. No, let's go, man. Tragically died from this. Would you still think that Rogelio would have a civil rights case to pursue? I do, because his constitutional rights to be free from unreasonable search and seizures, um, which apply not only to citizens, but persons. The Constitution is very clear. It says persons, not citizens. Stop. Aguilar Mendez is currently waiting for his asylum hearing in immigration court. The St. John County Sheriff's Office has not returned NBC's request for comment and Florida State Attorney's Office saying they don't comment on pending cases. Ultimately, Sergeant Michael Kunovich succumbed basically to some medical issues that actually were induced by the struggle with our subject. After seven months in custody, a judge last month ruled Aguilar Mendez to be incompetent, something that typically happens due to mental health. Uh, now they're going to say, oh, he's mentally challenged. He's undocumented, but they want to say that he's mentally challenged. How many of you guys believe that? Undocumented and uh, mentally challenged. Yeah, right. But his attorney says it's so he can have time to understand the charges and the U.S. legal system, adding he only has a sixth grade education in Spanish, which is his second language. To charge our client with his death is outrageous, and it's just not supported by law. Stephen Romo joins us now in studio. So, Stephen, what happens next here? How likely is it that these manslaughter charges will be dropped? And what are experts telling you about the strength of this case? Well, today was the deadline the attorney set for those charges to be dropped before deciding to file that civil rights lawsuit. So it seems like that is the next step. As for the case itself, our legal expert, Denny Savalos, telling me it's likely the defense will try to show that the deputy had a heart condition that preceded this event with the suspect. But that will happen once the court case actually takes place. But for right now, Aguilar mentioned is in limbo because he's been found unfit to stand trial at the moment. So, so they're saying that he's incompetent. Well, he was competent enough to cross the border illegally to, to reap the benefits in his country. He was competent enough to do that, but he ain't competent enough to be held accountable in trial. Come on now. Oh, well, he doesn't know any better. He's not competent enough to, to, to do that. Man, come on. Hit the like button to support the show. <laughs> Foundational Black Americans, hit that cash app, dollar sign red 1803. Get my subscribers and likes up, can you? Telling you about the strength of this case. Well, today was the deadline the attorney set for those charges to be dropped before deciding to file that civil rights lawsuit. So it seems like that is the next step. As for the case itself, our legal expert, Denny Savalos, telling me it's likely the defense will try to show that the deputy had a heart condition that preceded this event 
with the suspect. But that will happen once the court case actually takes place. But for right now, Aguilar Mendez is in limbo because he's been found unfit to stand trial at the moment. So the sheriff involved in this in St. John's County is running for re-election. What has the reaction been to him, to that, and this incident within the community? We have here at NBC tried to reach out to the sheriff's office and get comment as have other outlets, and they've not really spoken uh, much uh, at uh, all uh, since right after this incident occurred way back in May. So we would like more information about that. He is running for re-election, and many of the people in the community are supporting the deputy's family, holding fundraisers for them. So there is a lot of support. But since the video, the body cam video has been released, there's a lot of attention on this from immigrant rights groups saying that there was not uh, decided suspicious behavior for the stop to begin with, something many people are asking the sheriff and the sheriff's office to answer for. Stephen Romo, thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media. Now, I, I, I wanted you guys to hear that. I wanted you guys to hear that. Now, I want you to hear this about the Biden administration right here. Uh, then we're going to go back to the Mexico border. Hit the like button to support the show. Mike TV, what's going on, Mike TV? I see Mike TV in the building. What's going on, brother? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, Tim Elliott, for the seven. I appreciate you for supporting this beautiful game. Let's get to the next clip. Diane Stuckey Bruce earned three of her degrees at South Carolina State University, and she'd been paying off student loans for almost 20 years. It was really crushing. Um, because it was such a large debt that I know I incurred, but I thought it was necessary to get the education that I needed so that I can be successful. She says that debt had prevented her from buying a home well into her 50s, and she still owed more than $263,000 until late 2021, when she was stunned to learn all that debt had been canceled because she works in public service. I knew my life was going to change at that moment, that my, my, my life goes another direction now. Despite a Supreme Court ruling last year that struck down a larger student debt relief plan, the Biden administration has been rolling out smaller, more targeted programs. So far, the White House says it's erased almost $137 billion for 3.7 million Americans. Announcing today, it's wiping out debt for tens of thousands of public sector workers, including oh, teachers, so nurses, and firefighters. What do you think about this? Wipe, they're wiping out debt now. I got another clip, but I wanted to show you guys this because I wanted to get y'all thoughts about the Biden administration and what they did with this particular thing right here. Let's go. Billion dollars for 3.7 million Americans. Announcing today, it's wiping out debt for tens of thousands of public sector workers, including teachers, nurses, and firefighters. Still, many Republicans argue it's not fair for people who never went to college or who paid off their debts to subsidize those who didn't. Senator Bill Cassidy says the administration is essentially buying votes during an election year. But it's not really forgiven. It's transferred. It's transferred to those who paid back their student loans or who decided never to go to college. Now debt-free. Diane Stuckey Bruce says she's finally been able to build her dream home. It was the biggest blessing I've ever received in my entire life. A weight that's now been lifted. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, the White House. Thanks for watching. Stay up. Thanks for watching. Now, I, 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 got, I got something for you right here, man. Um, they're going to talk about funding for illegal immigrants, right? Additional funding for migrants, man. And Chicago, Cook County. We're going to go to that clip right now. Hit the like button, man. Give me your thoughts about everything that's going on. We're going to get into the hip hop culture vultures, I believe, like at the hour mark of the show. Right now, I wanted to talk about the, the migrants and all of this. And then we're going to switch gears and talk about these hip hop culture vultures at the same time after the hour mark of the show. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, student loan forgiveness. So Biden says student loan forgiveness, but who pays for it? I think you already know. None of the migrant situation only intensifying amid these Arctic temps. And now Governor Pritzker offering millions of dollars to suburbs that agreed to house new arrivals. Casey Cronus has the latest from the city's migrant landing zone. The state announced $17 million in additional funding. More than half of that will go specifically to suburbs to support new arrivals living there. But here's the catch. The money cannot be used to transport those migrants. to. I'm going to drop the link in a minute. 
I'm gonna drop the link in a minute. Don't even trip. The city. As new arrivals grapple with another day of frigid weather, Governor Pritzker is announcing more funding for welcome centers, work permit applications, housing, and health care. Meanwhile, a group of Republican lawmakers is working on a legislative package to slow the arrival of migrants to Illinois. We want to reverse. Yeah, yeah. And I want to shout out to John Jay, man. I want to get you guys thoughts about the student loan forgiveness. And, uh, you know, it helps people that's in student loan debt to uh to get ahead man so i want to i want to get you guys thoughts on that but anyway let's continue on with this clip and i'll give my commentary right after first the trust act so that local law enforcement can have conversations with federal authorities just last week texas governor greg abbott took to x touting he's already transported over 100,000 migrants to sanctuary cities on Sunday, Pritzker took out this ad in a Texas newspaper asking Abbott to suspend his operation due to the weather. You cannot say we're a sanctuary state, we're a sanctuary city, and say but only during warm weather days. New Lenox Mayor Tim Balderman says the state and federal governments are dropping the ball. But it's really frustrating as a local official when our federal government and our state government are just ignoring our immigration laws. Balderman was invited but is not planning to attend the now postponed meeting of the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, called by Mayor Brandon Johnson to strategize. Mayor Johnson's office says it was canceled due to the extreme cold. It's unclear when that meeting will be rescheduled. To date, Chicago has welcomed nearly 35,000 migrants from the southern border. Reporting at Polk and Desplaines, Casey Cronus, Fox 32, Chicago. I want y'all to hear that again. Welcomed nearly 35. To date, Chicago has welcomed nearly 35,000 migrants from the southern border. Reporting at Polk and Desplaines, Casey Cronus, Fox 32, Chicago. Man. Illegal immigrants, they come to steal your shit. Illegal immigrants, they come to steal your shit. Fast, drill, baby, drill. We're gonna drill, baby, drill. And also one day. Now, before we get into the Donald Trump clip, I got another clip, and then we're gonna get into the Donald Trump clip, but I want you guys to get a load of this. only happens in third world countries in banana republics it doesn't happen in our country and they've done it like never before i mean they're doing it with others and they'll continue to do it until we get them the hell out of office so we have to be very careful we have to win on day one of my new administration i will seal the border and i will shut down the invasion coming into our country and that's what it is just like a military invasion Three years ago, we had the most secure border in United States history. Did you know that? We built 561 miles of border wall. They like to say, oh, well, you didn't build. If there's a piece of wood laying on the ground that's 60 years old, and we put up a 30 foot high and nine feet deep steel wall, just what the Border Patrol did. Brandon Judd, who's fantastic, just like they designed. They wanted it. I wanted to put up concrete plank. I know a lot about construction. But it wouldn't have been as good, wouldn't have been as strong. And you need a view card to see who's on the other side. You know, it does help. You know, they used to drop. We had certain areas where there was solid. You couldn't see. They would throw drugs over the wall. And it would be like 100-pound sack, sacks of drugs. And it would actually kill people. It would hit people on the other side of the wall. Can you believe it? This is what. He's telling the truth. They would throw drugs over the wall. And it would be people over there picking it up. But a lot of people would get hit upside the head and they would die based on so donald trump is not lying he's telling the truth the democrats wanted you to believe that donald was making his up but no he's not making his up with all these mexicans crossing the border and all these drugs and fentanyl coming along with him he's not lying he's telling you the truth i know because i'm from california i witnessed this shit firsthand what they did but uh we built a tremendous amount, but if we, if there was a piece of wood laying there rotted <laughs> and terrible and, or a couple of nails or anything, they'd say, that's not a new wall. That's a renovation. <laughs> no, no, it's a new wall. <laughs> they'd throw the wood away. One guy would pick it up. It's dissolved. They wouldn't even do that, but we built a uh, tremendous, and that was great. We're going to put up another 
200 miles because we needed more. After we did that, we needed more. They go like that. And we had certain areas that we left to get everything through. And then we were going to seal it up. And then we had that unexpected result in the election. And then we heard that Biden wanted to have open borders. And he took the 200 miles, it was all built, ready to be installed, would have taken three weeks. And they sold it, much of it, for five cents on the dollar. They sold it for... Whoa. And, and, and. Let's go. Scrap. And that's the most expensive steel you can buy. We have rebar, concrete, and then wrapped in steel. Very expensive. It's exact... Yeah. But they sold it for, I understand, five cents on the dollar. It's a, it's a really sad thing. And that's when I knew they really do want open borders. They actually do. And nobody can explain why, but Mexico gave us 28,000 soldiers and millions of dollars, billions of dollars worth of uh, much more so. You know, they talk about the world Mexico is going to pay. Well, there's no mechanism for that. But they paid much more with what they gave us on the soldiers, on the remain in Mexico stuff, much more than if they had contributed to the construction costs, much more. I want to get that straight because a lot of people say, oh, Mexico didn't pay. Mexico paid a very big price. Everyone's talking about the border policy, but we don't need new laws and regulations. We just need to utilize the existing. If you look at Tom Holman and Brandon Judd and all of these great guys, they have existing laws are fine. Now, we can do some improvements to them, but we... Just get it going. But nobody wants to do it. And the Republicans have to be very tough when they negotiate with these people. We'll, we'll be back in there sooner. We'll lead the negotiation, I promise. Nikki Haley will never secure the border. She doesn't believe in these secure borders. She can't believe in them. She actually opposed my border wall. And she was out of, you know, out of all of a sudden she's opposing the wall. I say, what the hell is going on? She's actually opposing it because she's basically, as you see, you know, when you have all. They want open borders. And I'm pretty sure they have their reasons for it. And I think we know. But yes, they want open borders. All of those Democrats coming in to vote. I don't know that she's a Democrat, but she's very close. She's far too close for you. She condemned the things we were doing with the wall. And yet we had the greatest border, the safest border we've ever had. That included, by the way, your human trafficking. We had the lowest numbers in 38 years. One of the ho most horrible things we have going on in the world is human trafficking. You think it's an ancient thing. It's not. And what made it so profitable and so big now is the computer, the, the Internet. The Internet made all of that. And it's mostly in women. They traffic in women. And it's a terrible, terrible scourge. And she didn't fight it like she now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to this Trump clip, man. I want I want to show you guys this clip about a migrant. Who, who uh... well, authorities in Texas have started arresting migrants illegally crossing the border as the state's battle with the Biden administration continues to percolate. The arrest defying a cease and desist letter sent by the administration calling on Texas to allow federal border patrol agents back into that area taken over by the state's National Guard. Correspondent Allie Bradley's live for us in Eagle Pass, Texas, with more on this border battle, Allie. Yeah, the federal fight here, Nicole, intensifying. Of course, we know DHS, the Biden administration, saying they want full access here to Shelby Park. Texas is saying no way. In fact, they're actually doubling down. Check this out. This is new concertina wire that they just put up. And it is actually topped with the anti-climb barrier up here. So we've seen a lot of individuals come through the river and over these Connex boxes here. This is there now to prevent that. And you can see right over here across the river, there's a lot of activity here in Eagle Pass. Right now, though, on the Mexican side, you can see Mexican officials. And then we also just uh, can also report that Director McCraw with Texas DPS just arrived here at Shelby Park as well. Now, this all comes as we have new video that shows Texas DPS arresting 10 migrants who did cross the Rio Grande illegally this morning and climbed over those Connex boxes that don't yet have that concertina wire there up on uh, top there. Now, two others among those 10 were also arrested just moments ago. Now, Lieutenant Oliveras with Texas DPS is saying that troopers are enforcing criminal trespass on single adult men and women right now if they cross into Texas illegally. The undocumented individuals, they are not being turned over to Border Patrol. Instead, they're being put in jail on those trespassing charges. Now, Texas says the arrest cut off some of those pull factors of people entering the country illegally. This, as both sides right now are concerned of a potential confrontation. We're talking about 
the federal administration and the state level law enforcement. Sources with Border Patrol tell me that their agency actually wants an agent to be down here in the park with a body camera along the river in case a confrontation breaks out. Man, man, man. Texas began migrant arrests in disputed park. They should have been doing this shit, man. Why do you wait till millions? Of, why do you why do you wait till millions cross the border to start doing this when this should have been done a long time ago? So that they can have documented proof of that. So DHS gave Governor Abbott till the end of day on Wednesday to grant them that full access. That didn't happen. DHS threatened to take it to the Department of Justice, but we have yet to see a filing there. Now, the White House and DHS both accused Texas officials of blocking agents from helping three migrants in distress. A tragic situation there where a woman and two children drowned. The Biden administration, however, has admitted that those three migrants died at least an hour before Border Patrol even sought access to the park. Homeland Security Committee Chairman Mark Green Once again, they're trying to blame America for their problems. These people come to this country, they die. And they want to blame America for not saving people who broke the fucking law. Come on, homie. They want to make us responsible for these illegal immigrants and the bullshit they do. Risking death, bringing children to this country and risking death at the same time. And when they die, America is blamed for it, not Mexico, who allowed the shit to happen in the first place. Because they're using the Mexico border to enter the United States. So Mexico should be held accountable, not America, for this problem. Green says DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who is who the House is actively trying to impeach right now, as we know, is falling down on securing the border and Texas is within its right to step in. The real issue is, is that Secretary Mayorkas is not uh, living up to his constitutional mandate to protect the borders of the country. And the state of Texas has said under the Constitution that they have a right to do so when the federal government fails. And I, I believe you know, what Texas is saying is, is the right uh, position on that issue. It's over your right shoulder. Okay. Okay, so right now we can see that Border Patrol does have a boat in the water right here at the boat ramp. And I can tell you this, that Border Patrol has never been blocked from putting their boats in the water or retrieving their boats. They have had access to this boat ramp. What DHS wants is they want that full access. They want to be able to process and receive migrants here. Texas is saying that isn't going to happen. And there was a victory for the Abbott uh, administration here this week as well. Uh, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals granted them an extension at the rehearing of the case, Nicole. So for those buoys, you know, those big orange marine barriers, those will be able to stay in place until that case is heard now in May. So a lot going on in Texas. Yeah. When I tell you there's a lot of activity, can we, Dave, I'm going to ask you, I'm sorry, they're telling me to wrap, but I just want to show you here. So we've got Director McCraw over here along with Florida Wildlife Commission and other deep guest officials. Okay, Nicole, we'll send it back to you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. All right. Yes, we will. Hit that like button and support the show. It is Red Supreme. You already know how we do our thing. Breaking right now, a migrant is dead after a shooting outside the Gage Park facility. Alderman Ray Lopez confirmed the 28-year-old man died from his injuries. Police say he was on the sidewalk when an unknown car pulled up and someone inside that car fired shots at the man, hitting him in the head. The alderman says the man was the intended target. So the migrant got shot. Somebody pulled up and smoked a migrant. In the city of Chicago, somebody pulled up and, and, and smoked a migrant for uh, for who knows what. Now, why would they kill this migrant in Chicago? They pulled up and blasted him. I wonder why. Breaking right now, a migrant is dead after a shooting outside the Gage Park facility. Alderman Ray Lopez confirmed the 28-year-old man died from his injuries. Police say he was on the sidewalk when an unknown car pulled up and someone inside that car fired shots at the man, hitting him in the head. The alderman says the man was the intended target. He was the intended target. So he must have been involved in something if he was the intended target. You dig what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Show some love, man. I think you guys already know what it is. It's Red Supreme. Uh, man. The Biden administration is closing out 2023 in much the same way it began.
Well, this morning, the Biden administration is expecting an earful from city mayors. They are fed up with the nation's immigration crisis as the White House blames Republicans. This comes as the Secretary of Homeland Security is facing an impeachment effort on Capitol Hill. And joining us this morning with more is Shannon Bream. Good morning. Thanks so much for being here with us. Good morning. Great to be with you. So here in Chicago, of course, we are facing rising numbers of incoming migrants as many big cities uh, mm -hmm. falling temperatures, of course, right now, this time of year. So the mayor, along with New York City's mayor, is pleading for help from Washington. How is Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas responding? Well, he essentially says that they are controlling the border. Uh, a lot of folks push back against that. What do you mean by big control? Because Democrats and Republicans, people who don't have a party affiliation, say what they see there is disturbing. It's chaotic. And you mentioned the Democrats that are now publicly speaking out. They've been begging. They've been calling out the president, calling out the White House publicly. So it's become a very, very difficult issue for them. It pulls terribly for the president, especially in the middle of a reelection campaign. And to have all of these folks out there publicly from his own party saying we are desperate and you need to get control of this is putting a lot of pressure on the White House, which gives some folks in Washington some hope that maybe these Senate negotiations of a border deal might actually be substantive and go somewhere because there's a lot of pressure on the White House. Yeah, and there's been a lot of pressure on Congress to get some type of a government shutdown avoided by the deadline, which was tonight. But um, some on the far right are still mm -hmm. skeptical of using the temporary measure again for the third time. Talk a little bit more about how you think things play mm -hmm. out in the next day and weeks. So a, a snowstorm was rolling into D.C. You guys are pros there in Chicago. It's a little tougher for the folks in D.C., so they really wanted to get this thing done. They got the measure passed last night that buys them a few more weeks. But again, they'll have 12 appropriations bills to get through the House and the Senate. Can they get it done by March? They haven't gotten it done so far. So you, I think Washington should understand why so many of us are skeptical about this. Congress has got a 19 percent approval rating. And, yeah, the speaker has got a really tough situation situation in that they've got the tiniest majority they've ever held. It's the smallest majority ever in um, the history of Congress for the GOP. So there's not a lot to work with when you have conservatives who say we don't want to vote for this. And many of them didn't vote for the for that continuing resolution last night. But they've got to find a way forward or we're going to be doing this again in March. Yeah, and I'm sure the speaker is also looking what happened to the last speaker after he uh, worked out a deal that included Democrats. Yep. So um, who's going to be on your Sunday show? We've got three members of Congress with us. Each of them is the surrogate for one of the three top GOP contenders here in New Hampshire. So someone for Haley, DeSantis, and Trump. But we also want to talk to them about the campaign trail, but all this dysfunction in Washington as well. How do you move? All right. Now, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to switch gears, man, and we're going to talk about these hip-hop culture vultures, man. We're going to switch gears for a second and talk about these hip hop culture vultures, man. I told you we was going to do that like at the hour mark of the show now. What's going on? Show some love. It is what it is. Let's switch gears to the hip hop culture vulture, man. You guys see what it is with the open borders. Let's talk about the hip hop culture vultures. You know, you got Mexicans, man. Listen, I want y'all to listen to a clip. You got a Mexican. Hip hop is not a black thing. Right. Now, this is why we should never accept other races in our shit. You got a Mexican telling us what our culture is and what it's about. Man, that is disrespectful to the 10th power. We need to kick these Mexicans out of hip hop saying goofy shit like that. They ain't got no damn business in hip hop. Look, listen Let to this. Let me put a couple of things in perspective for you. Respect the black culture, but I don't got a rep it for you. And hip hop ain't a black thing. I got a lesson for you. Latino B-Boys in the Bronx laid the foundation for you. Hip hop always been a... Latinos in the Bronx didn't build a damn thing for foundational black Americans. We created our own dance moves. We created our own lyrics. 
Latinos in the Bronx embrace what we was already doing. How in the fuck is a Mexican going to tell us about our history as foundational black Americans? How the fuck is a Mexican going to tell us about our history as foundational black Americans when it comes to hip hop or history in America, period? You got a Mexican who want to do rap music, but can't make his own music, but want to disrespect what the fuck we got going on. He going to tell us about our history and culture. Man, this Mexican is straight disrespectful, and they got the nerve to be in their feelings about not being accepted in hip-hop when this is not your culture. This is a prime example of why we should not accept them in hip-hop. It's blatant disrespect. A Mexican going to tell you about your history. About saving the black and brown Gave a new meaning to Seeing bodies hit the ground Gave a new meaning to Homie out here getting down Head spinning Now your head spinning How that sound So before Let me put a couple things In perspective for you Respect the black culture But I don't gotta rap it for you And hip hop ain't a black thing I got a lesson for you Latino people Hip hop ain't a black thing I got a lesson for you What lesson are you giving Foundational black Americans You're, you're a Mexican That's crazy, but that shows you the blatant disrespect that they come with. That's a prime example of why Mexicans should not be uh, accepted in hip hop. They're disrespectful. How the fuck a Mexican going to tell us about our culture and what we created? And they ain't done a damn thing for the culture. Nothing. Of course, you know what I mean? Motherfucker had the Euro step, step back game. Climb. Damn, I'm, watching, I'm watching basketball right now. Like Dwayne Wade was balling. And we came in with them yeast infection cutters around his neck. Like, <laughs> hey, brother, we should have known something back in. We should have known something back then. But that's what that's uh, what we will we'll just go ahead and show you that. Like, we as a people, we're constantly evolving, constantly moving. Our culture's constantly sifting, just like our music. When they try to say, we was there. And they contributed something. First off, you didn't contribute a, a damn thing that wasn't already there. But just say for some weird ass reason you did contribute one thing in 1983. Nigga, by 1988, we was on something totally different. And whatever that little drop of contribution you did in 1983, crazy legs was on to the next thing. And we had been on to the next thing for two or three years. But we two or three removed. What he's saying is. Latinos pick up on shit after we're done with it, right? Like Mexicans in LA was doing gangster rap when it played out. Just like they started wearing Echo and stuff like that when blacks quit wearing it. The same way that Puerto Ricans in New York took on breakdancing when blacks quit doing it when they moved on. So they always catch on to what we do way later. Why? Because we're 10 steps ahead of them. Why? Because we're the culture. We create everything. They just follow the trend. Moved two or three years removed from being on to the next thing. That's the aspect of our culture that we got to really understand when we're having these conversations. I might, the reason why I like, I like having these Twitter spaces, y'all, because it's to expand the conversation. Because, like, for us, we go real deep. We do ourselves a disservice by going back and forth and fighting on the, on, on the beach in the sand with these niggas. Now nah, we gotta take. They, they want to fight, nigga. Let's go into the water and fight. Let's go. Let's keep going deep. Let's expand. Expectation. Okay, what did you bring? When did you bring it? And how does that thing that you brought play now? Now, I'll tell you what, people like Luke brought and these tethers brought to our music. They brought a blatant uh, oversexualization and disrespect of our women. They brought in when you see Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. They brought in this hella old ratchet and not respectable form of music because Queen Latifah wasn't rapping like that. Even the brat, we knew we knew the brat was on Functify. We didn't care. Nigga, Functify was cool than the motherfucker. We was like, man, the brat is dope. And she looked like she had beat Jermaine Dupree's ass. <laughs> Did she on a Functify video? I was like, man, she beat that little nigga's ass. We knew... <laughs> So listen, this is what I'm going to do, man. Uh, hit the like button and support the show. Like I said, bro, history is proven. Look at the Bible and you see a group of people who steal everything from another group of people. As black people, we're the chosen ones, man. We're the chosen ones. Mexicans will copy. Latinos in general, they're going to copy everything we do as black folks. 
they're culture vultures and uh, and most of them don't even like black folks but they copy our culture they steal everything we do to because they want to be cool just like us they want to make rap money they want to be considered cool but the problem is this with Latinos and Mexicans. When foundational black Americans came to America, we didn't steal nobody's culture. We had our own dances. We had our own music. We had our own way of dressing. We didn't steal anybody's culture. Now, think about this. They say that foundational black Americans don't have a homeland and don't have a culture. But it's mighty funny that everybody in America, everybody across the world, not just in America, copies everything we do. But we're the ones with no culture. Imagine this. They say we don't have no culture, but everybody copies everything we do. We must be pretty damn powerful to not have a culture, but everybody copies everything that we do. Mexicans copy everything we do. People across the world copy everything we do, but we ain't got no culture. Yeah, right. Get the fuck out of here. All these different immigrant groups that come from their own countries, they got their own homeland, but they come to America. They benefit off of everything we do while copying our culture at the same time. And they got the nerve to disrespect us. Nigga, please. We knew uh, Queen Latifah was probably a last on living single. I'm like, man, I know why you ain't married Scooter. You ain't married Scooter because you, know, you really want regime. We knew that. But it wasn't about all that. It really wasn't about that. It was about the music. It was about the music. We didn't care that Dana Owens, you know, uh probably um uh, shout out to lamar davidson for the five i agree with you brother they want us they want to be us and not their slaves shout out to uh, <laughs> lamar davidson just think about it mexicans literally copy everything we do when we did the zoot suits the black jazz musicians were zoot suits mexicans copied that because they wanted to be considered cool. They wanted to be more American. Well, fast forward to today. The Mexican youth want to be hip hop. So they copy and study the black culture to be considered cool in America. The same thing that Mexicans did back in the day when they copied zoot suits. So the proof is in the pudding. We are the culture as foundational black Americans. Everybody else just copies. Everybody else is just carbon copies. They're knockoffs. I don't care if they get mad. I got to tell them the truth. They are swagger jacker. They are swagger jackers and culture vultures. They don't. They don't have their own music. They ain't got their own style and sw and swag. They don't make their own music. They ain't got their own style and swag. They steal everything we do. And I'm sick and tired of people leeching off of. I'm sick and tired of people stealing what we do, homie. But they keep their culture and what they got to themselves while stealing our shit munched all the carpet in, in Hollywood. We didn't care. We we it would be a joke, like, oh yeah, you know Queen Latifah, yeah. Especially when that UNITY video came out when she was like, I put some dead design said, call it up. We was like, oh yeah, yeah. She's definitely <laughs> a lesbo. We I mean, give the brat. Hey D V. Go ahead. Let me get the I knew Go she ahead. was a lesbo. I knew she was a lesbo on my buddy. The my buddy video. She the only female in there with a fucking hot top fade. You girl in the back over there looking like I knew Latifa was that back in there. I punched him dead in his eye. U N I T Y and that's a unity. U N I T Y and that's a unity. I punched him dead in his eye. <laughs> I remember that back in the day. Queen Latifa talking about punching a thirsty nigga. Vanilla ice, a motherfucking dirty <laughs> shit. This did me. Yeah, man. Hey, it keep kicking me out, man. It keep saying that your shit is losing connection, and it keep kicking me out, man. I don't know what the hell is everyone else good because shit, I don't know. I'm, if, if, if hit the lead the emoji, y'all, y'all good. I know Nicole says she good. I don't know what that is, but either way it go, yeah. Everybody else says they good, but whatever happened, bro, we bring you right back up in here. I see, I got John Horse in here with his hand up. Uh, go ahead, brother. Yeah, what's good, man? Uh. <clears throat> Yeah, man, these articles that's coming. Let me bring you guys up, man. If you want to speak on the immigration crisis, you can speak on it. You can speak on the immigration. You want to speak on hip hop. You want to speak on Latino culture vultures. You're welcome to speak on it. I'm getting ready to drop the link. You can pull up to speak. It's Red Supreme. Serving nothing but beautiful game. Coming out, bro, talking about these folks, like, creating our style and shit, bro. It's just crazy, bro. 
at this point, they just trolling us. Um, I, I can speak, you know, for myself and a lot of other black men when I say that nigga, I've never gotten my style from any Latino or, you know what I'm saying, any African or Caribbean for that matter, bro. I've, ne I've never gotten my style from nobody from that side, bro. None. Absolutely none. And one thing, like you was just saying about our style, bro, our style constantly innovates. It constantly changes. Our style constantly innovates. It constantly changes. And the Latinos adapt to whatever we make cool. That's a fact. I'm going to bring you up in two more minutes, John Jay. I got you, John Jay. I'm going to bring you up. But this brother says something that's very important. Foundational black Americans never stole anybody dance move. We never copied anybody's music. We never wanted to dress like them. We never wanted to act and talk like them. Like, I put some dead design and said, call her nut. We was like, oh, yeah, yeah. She definitely a lesbo. We ain't give the practice. Hey, DV. Go ahead. I knew she was a lesbo. I knew she was a lesbo on my buddy. The my buddy video. He all came in with there with a fucking hot top fade. Look girl in the back over there looking like vanilla ice or motherfucking dirt the bitch kid. Just did me. Yeah, man. Hey, it keep kicking me out, man. It keeps saying that your shit is losing connection and it keep kicking me out, man. I don't know what the hell is everyone else good? Cause shit, I don't know. I'm if, if it hit the hit the emoji, y'all y'all good? I know Nicole says she good. She, I don't know what that is, but anyway, go yeah. Everybody else says they're good, but whatever happened, bro, we bring you right back up in here. I think I got John Horse in here with his hand up. Uh, go ahead, brother. Yeah, what's good, man? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, man, these articles that's coming out, bro, talking about these folks like creating our style and shit, bro, is just crazy, bro. At this point, they just trolling us. Um, <clears throat> I, I can speak, you know, for myself. And a lot of other black men, when I say that, nigga, I've never gotten my style from any Latino or, you know what I'm saying, any African or Caribbean for that matter, bro. I've, ne I've never gotten my style from nobody from that side, bro. None. Absolutely none. And one thing, like you was just saying about our style, bro, our style constantly innovates. It constantly changes. You know, um, if you look at like how a lot of the Latinos dress, even when it comes to the zoot suits, the zoot suits have stayed the same. When they started rocking the zoot suits, the zoot suits have not changed. Those things, they they still look the way that they did back when. They have not changed. But if you look at a lot of black men now and how we wear our suits, our suits are like way more fitted and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even with a lot of the uh, the streetwear that you see a lot of the uh, the Mexican cats wear, bro, their, their style is like stuck in the 90s. It's like... It's either stuck in the 40s, stuck in the 90s, and then now you see a lot of the young cats, bro. They're virtually, you know what I'm saying? They just copying what they see in a bunch of black American dudes doing now. So, you know, when it comes to, to, to style and fashion, bro, like we've always been in the forefront of it and we make, you know what I'm saying? We Let me bring John Jay up, man. I want to I want to get John Jay's perspective Then I'm going to bring some more people up. John Jay, what's good, my brother? Hey, what's up, Red, man? Can, can you hear me? good yeah yeah i can hear you loud and clear brother hey man great great show man um yeah man this whole everybody wanting to be like black i mean it's it's obvious man it, and this ain't nothing new man it's it's been like that since since we, since we've been here man it, you can go back and look at some of them old school movies uh when segregation and racism was at an all-time high White people were breaking into the hood to go to the black clubs. Uh, up there in Harlem, you had a famous club called the Cotton Club. It was nothing but black performers in there. And, you know, white folks would come in there, you know, because they wanted to be entertained and they wanted to get the black culture. So that, that ain't nothing new, man. You uh, White folks been doing it. Everybody copies black culture. It's, it is what it, American foundational black culture, anyway. Uh, and when blacks... When we borrow from other cultures, we always give respect and props. And like in hip hop, like the Wu Tang Clan, they've always given the Asian their props for what they borrowed from their culture. Yeah, they didn't try to say they invented all that stuff they talk about. I don't know because it's, it's clear that they did. They they borrowed from Asian culture with with the Wu Tang Clan. A lot of the stuff they were saying, and and they've always given props. That's something we do as uh, black people. If we do borrow or we put a twist on something that belongs to somebody else we we always pay homage uh to people but yeah. other people just feel like, feel like they can steal 
from us and, and uh, take, and they don't have to give us the, the respect to say, no, I got this from black women. It's obvious. A lot of times you ain't even got to say it. It is what it is. You, you know, you know, you just see it. But to comment on uh, what we're talking about for is the uh, illegal situation. Uh, well, that white dude that you posted that opened up the home, man, he's he's hustling, man. That's that's a hustle. Uh, yeah, he gonna open up his home and put fifty of them in, but I guarantee you, he either own a construction business and them people working for him because he said he to give him a job. And yeah, I let y'all stay all piled up in my place, but y'all gonna. Y'all gonna be working for me in my construction, making me millions in, in this little bitty time. So, and he probably getting some on the back end from the government too, all from giving him money to put them people up. So he ain't doing it for free. Everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody is, is is making money and trying to get over. So, yeah, if Biden wanna give me um pay for my student loan, hell yeah, I'm with that. I'm, I'm with some student loan for getting. Cause I pay a thousand dollars a month for my student loan. So hell. I pay into this system, so shit. I should be getting something back. These these illegals, they come over here like the one in Florida that uh, that, where the cop had a heart attack. If he sue and end up getting money for being falsely in prison, that, that's taxpayer dollars he getting. So that man get to break in the country, sue sue the country, get millions, and and you heard what he said. He said I'm over here to work to send money back to Venezuela. So he's taking money out. He gonna work over here, take money out the system to send back. To another to to his homeland. So yeah, that's just you know, them people robbing all the way around, man. And it's, and it's sad because they come over here with hatred for black people. And you heard like you played yeah. with that illegal up there in Chicago. Y'all are lazy. No money for you. He had the audacity to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, no more money for you. <laughs> but that's how that's how they all think. And and imagine if you get your city overran with people that think like that. What happens to you as a black person? I mean, they, yeah. this is how some illegal who ain't been in the country five minutes them broke into the country and got the got the audacity to talk to you like that. So, and then you get a bunch of yeah. them in your in your city, it's over for yeah. you. I mean, so and, and look at the Mexican. This is why I played the hip hop thing. How a Mexican gonna tell us hip hop ain't black culture? Like this yeah. is why I, I played that for my California people to see. Like, no, this is why I've been going in on Mexicans. They pretty down disrespectful. You notice this, John Jay? They get mad at us when we tell them the truth, but then he think they can say, "Oh well, hip hop is not black." Hold on, that's blatant disrespect. You just mad because I told you something that's actually true. No, hip hop yeah. is black culture because it was created by foundational Black Americans, homie. Right, and and I understand why you. As a YouTuber, I have to go go at them for that. But in reality, that ain't even nothing that anybody should even argue with nobody about. That's just like somebody come up to you and say Michael Jordan couldn't dunk when he played basketball. And you're going to sit up there <laughs> yeah. and, and go back and forth with him and yeah. argue. Well, well, yes, he could. And, well, no, he could. No, that's – come on, man. He just – I'm it's not even so going to you right up. You 100% you correct, John Jay. But the Mexicans have gotten so ridiculous that they are starting to believe their lies. That's why I said, right. hold on, let me shut this bullshit down. We shouldn't have to even say that. But you're right about that. We shouldn't even have to say that. That's how ridiculous that is. And like I've always said, if they could, they want to trick the youth. Because they know this generation of young people ain't really doing their homework. They ain't going to go look it up. If somebody say it on the internet, they just believe, okay, it's facts. And so if they just keep putting it out there that we in, we help invented hip hop and then next day it'll go from them being 50, 50 creators to another 20 years that they created the whole thing and black people ain't had nothing to do with it and yeah, so right so that's that's yeah, that's the overall goal but and they um and they know a lot of these young ones are not going to go do their homework on that but yeah it's getting tight out here so I like I always say man everybody got to build a kingdom protect it uh especially here in Atlanta I just see it man you got to get your money right and and as blacks, we got to stay on our square and get off a lot of the foolishness we own. Now, yeah, that's we, just how. we do, John Jay, because like I, I did, I, I'm going to do another follow up. See, it's not televised like it is in Chicago, New York. They're giving immigrants money to come to Georgia and, and uh, Atlanta and the surrounding areas. They're giving them money. They got a it's an organization in Georgia called Latino. I forget. But this particular Latino or, uh, organization 
they specialize in getting Latino housing and, and work permits so that they can start a new life in Georgia. So they're giving them money to come there. They're just not right. it's not televised like it is in Chicago. Yeah. And another thing that we got to get off of is stop calling them migrants and immigrants. Right. No, they are illegals. illegals. If I rob if I rob Wells Fargo, they're not going to call me. Oh, that's the dude that just took money without asking from Wells Fargo. No, he's a bank robber. So we gotta call <laughs> yeah. it. We gotta call it what it is. Because when you start calling them migrants and other stuff like that, you softening what they did. Like I saw with yeah. the Chicago report, you had the one black guy that was from the uh, the mayor's office, but then you had the other black guy who was sounding like he was for the people, but they really he was really against. He's like, well, I'm not against the the migrants, but the fact that you call them the migrants and they broken into your city. And they're taking uh, resources out of your children's mind. And he was like, hey, I support them, but just put them somewhere else. So, well, wait a minute. You're going to support somebody that broke into your house, stole your children's uh, uh, money, and then kicked them out of their room? But, well, I support them, but it ain't right now. <laughs> so that, that, that's what that's what we do is, but we play that little goofy game. No, these people are illegal immigrants, and they broke the law. And... As Black Foundational Americans, we break the law in one state. Ain't no other state going to give us sanctuary. It is what it is. So they got to, hey, no, that's just how we got to, that's just how we got to play. That's just how I see it, Red, man. Yeah, let me see what this Rob, Robert S. Robert S., man, what's going on? Yo, what it do, what it do. Nah, I'm just here to say that, yeah, as a Mexican, yeah, we got to get them Venezuelans out of here. They're no good, man. They're no good, man. Straight up. Why the Venezuelans ain't no good, man? Man, you want me to tell you what's really going on? Go ahead. All right, check it out. So, as Mexicans, a lot of times why we voted Democrats is because we were, you know, people were scared that the cousin, the tío, the tía, or somebody's going to get deported. So that's how they had us kind of by the, by the balls, you know what I'm saying? But as we, as Mexicans, as a lot of us don't need that because we're all getting papers and stuff like that. We're kind of uh, starting to lean more conservative because by nature we're conservative, you know, anti-abortion because of Catholicism and, and you know, we got a couple business, construction business right here and conservatives are more for the middle class and stuff like that. So the Democrats, they see that they're losing the Mexican vote, at least a lot of them, because we're leaning more towards middle class, which is considered conservatives to make the middle class stronger, right? Quote, unquote. So what they started doing is started planning all these caravans. They're like, yo... And who did they bring? The motherfuckers that are already from a communist country. So they like they're gonna stick with us because for one, if they don't, they're gonna go the other side. Their people are gonna get deported. So it was all planned out because they're they're losing America in a way with all the bullshit that they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So they bring these people that are used to their communist ways already gonna come over here to, to with their hand out. It, it, they're they're entitled, bro. It's crazy. I've I've never seen it. I've never seen it. You know what I'm saying? At least as Mexicans, we came over here to work, bro. We might have took somebody. Some people. Them, this is what I'm saying, though. I can't be mad yeah. at them. It's it's America and what we're doing. Because if I was struggling, I would come here if it was free shit. So I'm not yeah. so much so so much mad at them. I'm looking at Biden and the administration because you can't get mad at people for taking advantage of free shit. You really can't. Yeah, and and they're and they're bringing them over here. I mean, George Soros is funding the whole thing, and we all know he he's a leftist. You know what I'm saying? Hey, um, so uh, it, 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 it's all a plan yeah, to keep the Demo it's all a plan to keep the Democrats in power. It's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and they're just not coming with the right mindset, bro. So yeah, I mean, this next year when Trump's come in office, I know a lot of my people they are gonna see some brown ladies get hemmed up by some big ass white boys, and it, they gonna take to the streets and go crazy. But it's just ignorance, bro, because. It's all planned out. Biden, Biden knows that shit was going to happen, but he looks like the good guy right now. Like, oh, yeah, I'm letting him in. Oh, look, uh, the other side is the one that's taking him out. But it's all planned. They knew Trump was going to win. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't know yet, but we know. So yeah. it's all planned. They're going to bring him over here. Some of them are going to stay. They're going to stay leaning left. And then a whole lot of them are going to get deported back. It, it, it's just a trick and pony show. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, I, I appreciate I appreciate. I uh, appreciate your perspective, man. You know what I'm saying? Give them, uh, give, give them the last word, man, before I bring somebody up. You got it? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, Blacks have been in hip-hop, you know, 
uh, whatever, bro. It's all good. You feel me? We do dress like y'all, but you got to understand, bro. When we came over here, we had a choice. Either be like these uppity white people because we didn't speak English. You feel me? Either be like these uppity white people or be like the black people because we had to emulate one or the other. Yeah, we had the Chicano rap, but it's like the Spanglish. It, it didn't hit, bro. It, it really didn't. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good, dog. You know what I mean? I'll be in the comments talking shit okay. all the time, bro. You know, but I, I, I'm up here. Robert, man. You know. Hey, you know. Hey, it's, hey, all hey, it's all good, man. It's all good. Hey, you know, I want to Go ahead, Judge. Ask him a question. Go ahead. Now, and maybe you could, the, the guy that's uh, talking, he's Mexican. How are dark-skinned uh, Latinos in Mexico and Venezuelan, are they, are they mistreated over there in those countries because of their darker skin, even though they are Mexican or Venezuela or whatever? Is that true? I, like, you know, I've heard... I'm gonna, tell you, I'm gonna tell you like this: Latino countries are still more racist in a way than than America. The way I see it, I, I actually live in TJ right now. I cross the border every day to San Diego to work because it's just better living for me. You know, I, I I deal with like six hours of travel a day, but I'm able to own a house over here for for you know what the fraction of the prices of over there. You know what I'm saying? But um, but it it it, it it's uh the the colonialism. What what is it called? The uh, color that. You know, it it, it it was pushed hard over here, and it's still hard to die out. Like I know the blacks in uh in um in uh, the the Afro Afro Latinos, uh, they recently got like on the census, and not recently, it's been a while now, but like I mean, it's still recent, like five ten years. So in a lot of ways, it is backtracked. But um, so, it, so the darker, so so the dark, and that's just not Mexico. That's like pretty much in Latino all over those. No, the darker, well, it, it, it depends really because Venezuela, most of them are a lot browner. The more south you go, like once you get to Brazil, there's like, you know what I'm saying? Like the blood's stronger down there. But it, it, it really depends. It, it, it's all political at the end of the day. And the Spaniards did come and they conquer. So obviously they're the ones like in high places. Like if you turn on Univision, bro, all, all them novelas is, 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 is white people with blue eyes. And right. it's and it's and the and the cleaning lady is is the it's like the same thing with black people over here. The cleaning lady is is the brown lady. The ugly lady is the brown lady. So we got a uh, we got a type of black face here, but they hide it under clown. If you see yeah. the brown person, always has to be the clown that's painted as a clown. Yeah. That's how you get on TV. But it's kind of dying out too. But it's still you can still kind of see so, it as prevalent. Yeah. So I guess the point I was getting at is like in in those countries they treat their darker skinned. <laughs> uh kin folks or uh, countrymen bad because of their dark skin so i want black people to ask themselves a question if they treat their dark skinned people in their own country like shit, what you what how they gonna treat you when they immigrate over here so that's what i want black people to realize these people coming from these countries they already don't like they dark skinned people that speak their language, so they gonna come over here and like your black ass. Yeah, get out of here. That, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a type of. It's. It, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put it exactly like that, but it is a sort of type of brainwashery. But I, it's 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 different. Like it's it's more accepted. Like over there, the media like pays attention to it because black people have strived so much to make it a, a point of topic. You know what I'm saying? So if someone says you know the N word or the black, you know it gets called out. But over here, it's kind of normalized. To the point where it's like, oh, he's preto. So we just go back and say, all right, you're well. You know, like it's not like normal, but it's just more like a tip for tat. It's not more of a. I don't want to yeah. use the word sensitive. That that you guys are more sensitive about the situation or nothing like that, because that's not that's not the right word to say it. But it's kind of around those those those. You get what I'm saying? But they're treated different, like because I've talked to other uh, Latinos uh, from other cultures. They say, yeah, the the darker skinned uh Mexicans or the darker skinned uh El Salvadorian, yeah, they get treated a lot different in those countries. It, so so it always makes me ask as a black person, well, if they treating their own kind of dark skinned people in their country like they're they ain't gonna come over here and like my black ass. So I just my my intelligence won't let me won't let me believe that. So if you're gonna treat the, your own kind like they're you ain't gonna immigrate over here and just fall in love with me. I don't care how many yeah, yeah, but Tupac I, I, I CDs you like bought. I look at every situation as it is, and I treat people for it is, and I read the situation as it is. But um, I'm not gonna say that, you know, because uh, we had a, a system over here. Okay, the pure white skin, uh, then the mulattoes, and then the uh, you know, the uh, the ones that are indigenous, and it, I forgot what it's called, bro. But this is way back, way, way, way back. But I'm saying old habits are hard to 
to die out. But it is something that seems like it's improving. But I still see it. Like, I mean, you you put on Univision, bro, and they're talking about the royal family. Like, who the fuck cares about the royal fucking family? What the fuck's that got to do with Mexico? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's that type of white superiority type deal that's still trying to, like, brainwash the masses. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're but hey, hey. Shout out to you, uh, dude. A, a red, great show, man. I'm gonna jump off and let somebody else have it, man. Yeah, dude, show, I, I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all have a good one. I'm out. Mm -hmm. All right, All appreciate right. y'all. Appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to everybody, man. Hey, man, I appreciate everybody for this show, man. You know, I just wanted to come here and share some knowledge and information. Listen, man, I let Latinos speak. Hey, man, if you real and you understand what's going on, we cool, man. It ain't no problem. I'm just speaking about the people that are brainwashed and who want to rewrite history. That's the stuff that I got. That's the stuff that I got to call out. And that's, you know, that's what I do. So, you know, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm cool with a lot of Mexicans. I don't have problem with Mexicans that have respect for our people. They show love and respect. I give them the same thing, homie. Any Mexican who knows me will say, yes, Red gives us respect as long as we give him, as long as it's reciprocated. I don't have a problem, man. But all I'm saying is you can't tell black people what's not black culture that's disrespectful and that's why i did the stream yesterday with the mexican telling us like how you guys gonna be in your feelings about something that somebody said on a podcast but then you got a mexican who get up here and say rap isn't black culture that's blatant disrespect if anybody should be pissed off it's foundational black americans you got people making money off of our culture but they're gonna tell us it's not ours we didn't create it it's not ours and you got somebody that's an uninvited guest telling you about the culture in your history as an uninvited guest. <laughs> Come on, man. So that's why I've been going in, making videos, telling them, like, this is black culture. What you're doing is blatant disrespect. So I've been calling that out. I've been on the forefront of this shit. Just putting things in perspective. To let everybody know that we're not going to stand for it. But anyway, man, I think I didn't say enough about this, man. Uh, you know. Hold on. We set trends. You know, so this whole thing about us starting, you know, everything 50-50 and influence. Foundational black Americans create trends and set trends. Ain't nothing 50-50 about no hip hop. It's like it's either stuck in the 40s, stuck in the 90s, and then now you see a lot of the young cats, bro. They're virtually, you know what I'm saying? They just copying what they see in a bunch of black American dudes doing now. So, you know, when it comes to, 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 to style and fashion, bro, like we've always been in the forefront of it and we make, you know what I'm saying, we set trends. You know, so this whole thing about us starting, you know, everything 50-50 and influencing rappers and all that. You can't have a group of people who assimilate into white supremacy. You know, you can't have our style assimilating into white supremacy. It's just impossible because you know our culture alone. And they, they corny ahead, ahead. like their whole style. We've always seen it. You're right. They always do what we do 10, 15 years later, and then once they come up with that twist, whatever, whatever change, um, they come up with. I mean, whatever change we come with that, that, that we came up with that they copy. They don't they, they don't copy the they don't copy the next 10 to 15 changes that we make. They find that thing that that we do, and this is with all the cultures, this is with white folks, this is with everybody, Asians. They find that pocket that of us uh, of, of, of what we do that makes them comfortable, that they can rock, that they can afford or whatever, and they stay there for a decade plus. Decade plus. We can't like look, man. I, I if, if if you still wear if you people it, how many I I'm not even that into fashion I'm not, I'm the kind of person I don't give a fuck about fashion I just gotta be clean I don't believe I don't you know I don't I don't I don't do all the extra shit when it comes to dressing I can't I know when to, I know when to clean up and do extra stuff but I really don't get into all the extra shit when it comes to dressing um but even with that being said you don't keep the same jeans in your closet you had five, six, seven years ago, because the, the style has totally changed. The fit, the cut, 
everything. And this is coming from people like me who only who don't even give a fuck. Just my blackness in me. I can't be walking around in no 2009, you no know, 2007 cut baggy jeans. And I definitely ain't walking around in no goddamn 2015 cut no jeans. They're a little skinny nut. <laughs> and I feel you, man. And, and and listen, man, I think uh we didn't say it enough on today's show. We dropped a lot of jewels that you guys can use. We talked about the hip hop culture vultures. We talk about the migrant crisis, foundational black Americans coming together to get on one accord. Hey, man, it was a wonderful show, man. And like I said, uh, I'll be back tomorrow with some more content. But I um I would have came here earlier, man, but I had to come back because I had some things that I needed to clean up. So you already know. Shout out to my real one. Shout out, shout out to my man. Uh, um, Roy G seven four for the five. Shout out to Roy G seven four for the five, man. I appreciate you for showing love to the show, man, brother, man. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring you up and let you speak. I see you in the background, man. I want to give you an opportunity to speak, Detroit, man. I'm gonna let you speak on this one before I hang this show up. You got it, my brother. Yo. Red, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, my brother. You got it. Damn, man, you breaking up. I, I, I'm at work right now, bro. Can you hear me? I can I can hear you real good. Real good. All right, you breaking up on my end. Since you can hear me real good, I'm going to go ahead and speak. And I just look at the replay. But yeah, right. I'm, I'm on the clock at work. But look, I'll fuck with you the long way, Red. You know what I'm saying? I'd have called in a thousand times, my guy. And this situation, how you been going hard in the paint? You know, covering the politics of the black community in Chicago, you know, Georgia and New York. You know what I'm saying? You said something a long time ago as far as uh, game go, women go. You know, it's good to know female nature, but at the same time, we got more important to talk about. And men, their conversations are broad and diverse. You can't just talk about women all day long. You got to talk about more important shit that right. affect our lives and give us a broader perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So, that being said, that being said, man, I can't wait to Tariq drop this motherfucking DVD, man. Uh, microphone check. My man Detroit dropped down, man. Uh, I think I think his connection went out. Like I said, we men, we can't just talk about female nature without addressing other things that's important that affects black people and black men in particular. So if somebody really wants to give you gain, they're not going to just talk about female nature. They're going to talk about other things that affects black men as well. But these red pill alpha male niggas won't do it. They won't do it. They'll just talk about women and female nature all day. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to Detroit, man. Like I said, I'm going to get up out of here, man. Uh, I think I said what I needed to say, man. It's way more important things. It's, it's a, it's, listen, man, there's too many things going on to just talk about female nature and what's going on with women. Only bitch niggas sit around and do that and won't talk about nothing else. But anyway, man, peace, love, and blessings giving you gain to keep you from stressing. I'm gone.